One, two, three. Man, praise God. You guys sound like woo. radicals, amen? Radicals. That's what it is. Radicals in the building, amen? Radicals in the building, amen. All right, look at your name and say, get your Bible out. All right, praise God. Uh, everything God does is going to be according to the word. And so man will do some things and people will do some things, but you always know it's God when it lines up with the word, amen? When it lines up with the word, then that's, that's how you know it's him. If it's not lining up with the word, it's not God, amen? Because God doesn't act outside of his word, amen? He doesn't know how to do that. He just is, is only in his word, praise God. Let me, uh, just one second here, I'm getting all this stuff. So once I get going, I'm telling you in advance, it's gonna be a powerful time today. I just already know what God is doing, so I want you guys to just look at your name and say, I'm glad I came to church today. I'm glad I came to church today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because what he's going to give you is going to be good. Amen. Praise God. All right. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God. Did, did I already tell you, tell your neighbor, get your Bible out? Did we already say that? We already said that. All right, we already know. We got our Bibles already. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, how many know we live in, we're living in times now where we need the power of God? Come on. Uh, I don't think you guys heard me. We're living in times now where we need the power of God. Come on. Um, church ain't going to work anymore. Amen. Come on. Religion ain't going to work anymore. How many of y'all been, been let down or know some people that have been let down by religion? Amen. You done been let down. Come on. How many of y'all, there's a lot of imposters in religion. Amen. Oh, y'all see, y'all didn't know I was getting into all of this. A lot of people, there's a lot of imposters in religion, but the power removes all of that. And so we need the power of God. I'm going to preach this message today entitled Real Power. Amen? Real Power. And so there's counterfeit power and there's real power. Amen? And when it's real power, it's only coming from one source. Amen? Come on, somebody. The only power that's real is the power that's coming from heaven. Amen? And that is the power that is strong enough to change any situation that you would face. It's the power that's coming from heaven. Go with me to Luke. Luke chapter 24. We'll start in verse 49. And Jesus gives clear instructions to his disciples. They're getting ready to go do some things. They're going to get into some challenges. How I many know oh, your Christian life is not going to be without challenges? Amen. Any, Amen. You're going to have challenges. Matter of fact, you're going to have challenges in some cases, and in most cases, you're going to have more challenges after you get saved than before you got saved. Because the enemy is doing his best to try to stop you. Well, Jesus gave the, the answer that's necessary. He says in Luke 24, 49, he says, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And let's look at this in the uh, NLT. He says, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and what? Fills you with what? Power from where? Mm. So wait here. Before you start trying to do something for Jesus, wait here until the Holy Spirit fills you with power from heaven, because that is the power that you are going to need to win in this life. Now, here's what we have going on today. Today, people are trying to be Christians without being filled with power from heaven. Amen. Come on. They are trying to be Christians without being filled 
with power from heaven. And so here's what we got going on in the church. It ain't this church, but I'm speaking of the church in general. Here's what we have going on in the church. So we have more of a psychological approach in Christianity. We have all of this, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time trying to understand people, right? Can I get an amen right here? Uh, we, we spend a lot of time trying to relate and, and do all these things. We spend a lot of time uh, trying to do all this instead of identifying the spiritual forces that are opposing them or oppressing them. Amen. Let me say that again. So in church, we spend a lot of time trying to be compassionate, kind, understanding, instead of being used by God to identify spiritual bondage. Ah. Uh, now, what I'm preaching about is the way the church started. The church started out this way. It ended up into this kumbaya state that we're in now. It ended up in this everybody's offended by everything state that we're in now. It ended up in this place where pastors are scared to tell the truth now. But that ain't the way it started. The way it started, it was a dependency on spiritual power. And so we take this psychological approach to church and everybody's trying to, oh, you know, uh, let me just learn about you. Let me do all this stuff instead of, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to identify the spiritual bondage. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to identify the spiritual bondage in your life. And of course, the devil will have you be offended because he's being called out. And, but we got to understand what the church was intended for. Jesus did not start the church just so that people could go to heaven. He started the church so that people can go forth and fulfill the Great Commission. Amen. The assignment of the church is not just to invite people to a building. The assignment of the church is to demonstrate heaven's power on planet Earth so that a world that is in bondage would see what freedom looks like. And so. Every problem, look your name, say every problem. Every problem has a spiritual origin. I'm going to be the one that's going to tell you this. You're not going to get things fixed in your life until you come to terms with the truth. Every problem has a spiritual origin. And you got to learn how to engage. And you can't be afraid. And you can't be ignorant. And that's why Jesus told those disciples, you stay here. Don't you go do nothing for me until you get the power from heaven. Amen. Because if you go do something for me, you're going to be out there doing it in your own power. And that's what churches are doing today. They're, they're coming up with marketing campaigns. They're coming up with, and so what? They will flock people into churches, but it makes no sense to me for somebody to go to a church and go back home in the same bondage before they left to go to church. You got the same devil abusing you before you went to church. Then you go to church and come back home and he said, welcome back. What's wrong with this picture? Because people are avoiding things that are necessary. And so every problem, look at your name, say every problem. Oh, because it, it, see, it has a spiritual origin. Now, why is this important? We spend time blaming people. Amen. We spend time getting mad at people. What happens when people argue? Somebody says you're wrong and I'm right and all that. But there is a demonic force that is not even being addressed. And you get in an argument and they say, well, I'm mad at you and you're mad at me. And then we, you know, yell at each other. Da, da, da. And all along, the demon is like, see, they don't even know I'm here. They're going to let me stay as long as I want. 
And then, they, and then the demon starts inviting his friends. He said, you know, which bedroom are you going to take? Because I, I, already, I already claimed the one upstairs. I'm going to take that one for myself. And Christians are living under demonic oppression. When they have King Jesus, the curse breaker, come on somebody, the most powerful force the world has ever known, they have King Jesus alive and well but yet still being oppressed. Hmm? Okay, Ephesians 6, 12, go over there. Every problem has a spiritual origin. You're not going to get rid of situations. Your family life is not going to change until you be willing to engage in the spirit. Let me tell you that right now. You're not going to, oh man, me and my wife, we understand these things, but even all the way down to having a, a neighbor who's a nuisance, it's spiritual. You know, we had this problem with this neighbor and they always, we didn't know about this, but it was Airbnb back then and we didn't know what it was. But somebody was always coming over this house and every time it was Saturday night, you know what I got to do on Sunday morning? I got church. But I got these people making this kind of noise on Saturday night. Oh, I'm just mad at the neighbor. For what? It ain't their fault. It is the devil trying to disrupt what I got to do the next day. Well, we understood that. It took us a while to catch on. But so what did we do? We didn't just keep praying about it. Lord, I just pray. I pray, Lord, that you just cause them to be quiet. See, some of y'all doing that right now. Lord, I just pray you fix this person. I pray you fix that person. And God is waiting for you to take your spiritual authority and step up and you start to do something. Amen. And you start to decree and declare. Listen, the devil ain't going to leave until you tell him to get out. But, oh, that, that's not, that, I'm just not that kind of person. You need to be. Because everything has a spiritual origin. Every problem has a spiritual origin. And so what did me and my wife do? We activated some spiritual authority. We went out there and started pouring oil all over the ground facing his house. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. We, we got to walking around in our backyard speaking in tongues, pointing at that house. Now, that's a lot different than what most people know to do. Most people say, I'm gonna call the police. Well, I was in that category, most people, and until I realized the police ain't doing nothing. Now, if I manifest in the flesh and I go over there and I put the neighbor in a chokehold and I say, y'all better come because he's about to tap out. They'll get there quick. But then I'm gonna be in trouble. And so it's spiritual. So we have to identify the fact that, wait, this is spiritual. Man, we mess around and poured the oil and got to pointing and got to doing all this stuff. And all of a sudden they start being quiet. Now, what is that, a coincidence? But all the time that I'm sitting there complaining about the noise instead of activating my spiritual authority, waiting for something to change, without me activating my spiritual power. Then we had another guy across the street. This man was a meth head. And we live in a nice neighborhood. But, you know, he, he was married to this lady. Well, she kicked him out, but he had a camper in the driveway. And this man was living on, in the camper. Amen? So what are we doing? Oh, man, so he's out there making noise. He's just tinkering around and just making, you know, come on, some of y'all don't know about meth people. They, they, they don't know, they just be tearing up stuff because their mind is just going. They got it, and so he's just out there. Even this, now, I'm, not, I'm just being transparent now. I know these things, but just because you know it, it don't work for you if you don't do it. So, we're, we're, we're hearing this noise. We're complaining. I go out there. Say, hey, man, you need to be quiet. And then they'll say, okay, whatever. But it doesn't go away because it's spiritual. So then my daughters even did this. They wrote him a letter, but they made it, you know, like they tried to disguise their handwriting and all this stuff. And they wrote a letter out and then they put it on his, snuck it and put it on his door and said, 
you're disturbing the whole neighborhood. No one wants you here. No one likes you. Da, da, da. <laughs> and so I think he read the letter and he stopped for a little while. But guess what? He came back. See, that's how people get delivered from something. Amen. Y'all hearing that rain going through that pipe. Yeah, this, this is a warehouse. Amen. But, we, it, ain't, but it ain't going to get in here, though. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But sometimes you have things going on and you deal with it a little bit, then it goes away. But how many of y'all have stuff that came back? It's a spiritual origin. And so you can't just complain about it or take some carnal approach because it ain't going away permanently. It's going to come back. And so now this is picking up. So I'm fast forwarding. I'm telling you how we know stuff, but until we activate it, nothing's going to change. So now, guess what? Here we go again, me and my wife. Okay, it's time for a mission. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's time for a mission. See, when we do it, like my wife knows when I do it, the, my hands is all oily. I mean, because I, I don't play with the oil. Amen. I, I, I like to give me one of the big ones from Costco. Amen. <laughs> a big olive oil from Costco. Amen. And I mean, I like anoint you guys kind of like nice and, you know, nice in here. But I don't do that when I'm on that mission. So we go, we go out. We go at night. And now we know people got ring cameras, but we don't care. So we're going down our street because now the Airbnb dude, he was OK. But then we find out some other ones is trying to do it in the neighborhood. Then we got this this dude across the street, this meth head, amen, and, and so we're like, we got to get rid of him. And so we go down and we start walking with the oil. Now, I'm going to tell you some things that might be uncomfortable for you, but you need to get out of that. You don't need to be in religion, amen. You need to be in power. You don't need to be in no religious institution. You need to be in power. We walk down the street speaking in tongues. Oh, that's another problem. People got in the church. Christians don't want to speak in tongues no more. Well, you need to because there's some power that you're not going to be able to activate if you don't get in them tongues. So we start walking down the street speaking in tongues, pouring oil, pouring oil. And then I'm right in front of their house on the sidewalk. I didn't go on their property. Right on there, right in front of the house on the sidewalk. Going down, right in front of the house on the sidewalk. Then right down the middle of the street, speaking in tongues. Amen. And do you know, the next day, that guy I'm telling you about, the meth head dude, he's outside and he's looking, trying to, he trying to sweep that up. He's trying to say... He's throwing sand on it. He don't know what it is. Because let me tell you about the oil. When you pour it, it's going to stain. See, some of you right now, you might pay attention. When you leave out of here today, look on the ground. You're going to see oil stains. Why? Because I've been over here praying. I've been over here pouring it out. I've already released the oil around this whole place. You're going to see it. You go over there towards the kids. You're going to see oil. You look at some of these doorways. You're going to, oh, that, there it is. See, it's been marked. And it can't, it, it can't be a race in the spirit. I'm not afraid of these spiritual things. That's why don't nobody bother our stuff. We don't have nobody coming up. We don't have no weird stuff going on over here because we've established our presence. And our presence brings heaven's presence with it. And so you must establish that. So we do this, and next thing you know, everybody's behaving. You don't want to be outside. You know, and then the enemy will try. He try to come back and do it. Mm-mm. Next thing you know, he's gone. All this time we've been complaining. But we activate spiritual power and things change. Is this by chance or is this? It's because every problem has a spiritual origin. And until you activate things in the spirit. Come on, man. I mean, we've been doing this stuff for years. This is just stuff we've known. But if you know it and don't do it, like we had years ago, my cousin, his son was almost teenage, but he's still peeing in the bed. We said, well, what, what is, uh, give me something that he wears all the time. Well, he wore a do-rag. He liked to keep his waves in his hair. So he always put that thing on his head. So what did we do? We got that thing, put oil all over it. Now go take it and put it back in his room. And what happened? He put it on his head. 
and right away he just stopped peeing in the bed. Never peed in the bed ever again. I don't know, Pastor. That's probably coincidental. That's why you don't have no breakthrough in your life. That's why you're still dealing with the same stuff year after year. That's why you're still in the same broke down state because this is not going to change. You got a lot of parents praying for their kids, but they're not activating no spiritual power. So guess what? Them kids ain't changing over that prayer. They're going to change because it's a demonic stronghold and you got to be willing to engage. You got to be willing to confront that. You got to be willing to establish the power of the blood in your own house. You establish what's happening and what ain't happening. That's on you. Amen. Me and my wife, we never did. We just wasn't about to wait around to let things change. We're all about the confrontation. We're all about the showdown. Because if you don't get engaged, nothing will change. And so Ephesians 6, 12, he says here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> what you gotta understand about this is the devil, the stronger you get in Christ, he ain't going to send them elementary devils to you. The stronger you get in Christ, he's sending somebody that's higher ranking, amen? And so as soon as you make some progress in the Lord, a lot of people talk about grace. Oh, it's the grace of God. Yeah, the grace of God gives you access, but when you step in, here come the devil. And so now you're going to have to step your game up so that you be ready to deal with a stronger opponent. Amen. This is not popular, but the reason it's not popular is because the devil wants to keep the church weak. And so he's going to send whoever he wants to send. But you have to understand we cannot win using carnal strategies. Amen. We cannot win using carnal strategies. We need spiritual power. We need spiritual power. Now go to Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8. King James, then we look at the Amplified. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's look at this in the Amplified Classic. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might. See, this is what you need to contend. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. And so this word power here means dunamis. That's force. It comes from the Greek word dunamis, but that means force and capacity. You have the force and the capacity to defeat the enemy. I got one amen. That was my wife. Man. You got the power. Man, see, a lot of times Christians don't want to hear that. What if I told you that in counseling? You came and said, I'm just having some problems. Oh, Pastor, I need help with this. And I said, cast out the devil. You say, huh? No, well, well, yeah, that's it. See, we, but that's how it used to be. That's the way we need to get back to. We need to stop clouding issues and falling for the enemy's tactics. And he will always give you another reason for your problem. You have this issue because this happened to you at work, or this happened to you, or you have this because this was there. It's always some other reason, but it's never a demonic stronghold. Most people never put that on the devil. Most people never say, man, I got this anger problem. I think this is a demonic stronghold. Come on, y'all. How many of you angry people have ever admitted that? Most of the time, people that got problems, they never say they got problems. 
they always got somebody to blame for their problem. Well, the devil is very smooth at that. He knows how to get you to pay attention to everything that's not going to help you. But Jesus wants you to pay attention to what will bring change. And so Christianity without power, what power am I talking about? I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, parents, you need to be praying for them kids to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Come on. You can't just be, I'm just raising these good Christians. You need to get them kids baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. You need to pray over them. Come on, you need to lay hands on them kids and put the oil on them kids. Man, we used to anoint our kids every single night. Years. And they, they began to expect it. Amen? But this stuff just doesn't happen through osmosis. I, I just can't, uh, you know, and then you have the Holy Spirit that will give you discernment. And so you'll see things. And, and uh, parents need to stop having selective blindness. Just like I'm your pastor, uh, some of y'all ain't going to want to be around me that often because I'm not going to have selective blindness. I'm going to be willing to tell you, you need to deal with this or that. Amen? Amen. Now, as a parent, you can't have selective blindness. You're seeing things, but you're ignoring it. And you know, the thing about the devil is he, he shows his hand early on. He'll show it early. And you'll, you'll pick up character traits in your kids. It's rebellion. It's different things. You'll pick it up. But if you don't deal with it, it's going to manifest. It's going to become a great problem for you. And later on, you praying to God to help you. But it's got spiritual origins. And so you need to confront them. And, and me and my wife had a, a commitment to that. We're going we're gonna to confront it at all costs. We're going in. Amen. Now, if, if our kids, if they're if, if they going to be smooth enough to hide it from us, that's on them. But believe me, I'm going to confront everything I find out about. And, and my, my kids know I'm not one to confront later. Yeah. See, that's parents' problems today. They don't want to confront nothing today. Let me just find another way. I ain't finding a way. I'm getting it in today. We're going to deal with this issue. And that's the way you need to be. But... This power, this Acts 1-8, that's the Holy Ghost power. You need that, and you need that to win. And so uh, Christianity without power brings double-mindedness. So what do we have? We have a lot of double-mindedness in church. Why? Double-mindedness meaning that you say one thing. Come on, can I get an amen right here? Amen. But then you do another. See? James says it clearly, he says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So what does this mean? You say you love Jesus, but then your actions show you love something else. That's double-mindedness. Why is that double-mindedness there? It's because it's Christianity without power. Here's what happens with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will dominate you. And that's why the devil is trying his best to keep the Holy Ghost out of church. If I start talking about tongues, I guarantee you I can get a whole bunch of comments and a whole bunch of arguments about oh, tongues isn't for today. I start talking spiritual things. There's going to be a whole lot of people that don't agree with these spiritual things. So we start talking about accountability and all these type of things. People won't agree. See, James um, was that one eight. It says a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Is that one? Oh, I can't see the top. This one. Yeah. And so what we want to be is we don't want to be unstable. You need to be consistent. And so what you have to learn is I have a power that is greater than the devil. Now let's go over here to Matthew. I'll show you a difference in how God's power and the power changes things, changes people, changes situations. And so when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, meaning Elijah, and others Jeremiah, meaning Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He says unto them, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter asked him and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee but my father, which is in heaven. 
And I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is the rock of revelation. This is revealed truth. And he says, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Stop right there. Binding and loosening. Amen. Binding and loosening. How many know you got the power right now to bind demonic forces? Amen. You got the power right now to loose heavenly provision. Come on. How many know you right now you can bind lack and loose kingdom provision? Oh, see, <sighs> so we don't lack nothing, man. You ought not be lacking anything in your life. You have the power. I bind lack. That spirit of lack that came from the pits of hell, I bind it in the name of Jesus and I loose kingdom provision. And watch it flow. It'll flow right there into your life. Amen. You can bind that. I bind that spirit of pride. Amen. Come on, somebody. And, and, and I lose humility. You, you could change the way people act. But this is something that God gave. He gave to the church the power to bind and loose. Now, was that 19? Did I finish that one? Okay. Now, go down to verse 21. So that's Peter. So y'all remember Peter, before we read this, remember Peter, um, Peter was gung-ho, right? He was gung-ho. Uh, Jesus, I got your back, man. You, you guys remember that about Peter? Jesus, Peter said, I'm, I'm never going to leave you. Everybody else is going to leave you, but you know me. I'm right here, man. I'm, uh, you know, the men, we talk about having a 100 club, right? And Peter was in the 100 club. That's what he would say. But when you're really in, you're really in. But if you're not in, the devil's going to give you a chance to be exposed. And so Peter said, I got your back. They came to get Jesus. Peter was the one to cut the man's ear off. I'm ready for war. But then now Jesus told him, hey amen. He put the man's ear back on and said, calm down. If I, if I wanted to, I'd have 12 legions of angels come and tear this whole thing up. And so what does he do? Puts the man's ear back on, but then he goes. But then he told, you know, he did tell Peter, hey, you know, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, no. Jesus, you must not know who I am. You must, not, you must not know how I roll. I'm committed. I'm committed. And I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. So guess what happened? You read the Gospels. What did Peter do? Denied him three times. All the way down to the third time, the people said, I know you was with him. Because your voice, you talk like him. See, that's him. He, and then Peter messed around and started cussing. <laughs> How you going to go from cutting somebody's ear off, talking about you with God 100, to cussing? <laughs> to deny him. Why? That's Christianity without power. That's like people today. How are you going to be praising God like that at church and, and giving him them high praise and you going home acting like a fool in your house? You going home and you up in there tearing up the house, cussing and acting up, and but you was up in there giving a high praise. Who you fooling? It ain't God. Hmm? It ain't God. Some people, you can't roll up on them on the wrong day. Ah, uh, they can't, uh. Because they ain't want, you know, you ever met these people that pop into these moods? You're just moody, got a mood, just and stepped into a mood. Amen? My, my son had this challenge because he, you know, he was trying to, you know, do some Bible studies with guys on his football team, but he talked to me, and I told him my stance. He said, you know, one person wanted to teach the Bible study, but then he's like, but Dad, you know, but I'm hearing this dude in the weight room, you know, cussing and doing all this stuff. He said, I, I'm, I'm not feeling like I'm, I can go to the Bible study. You know, and then the, the average response is, well, you know, we don't judge people. No, yes, we do. I'm not about to listen to you preach nothing. Come on, somebody. I just heard you 
talking like a heathen. And now you're supposed to teach me something? And never mind. And I told him what I would do. I said, uh, you best believe if I got a group of pastors and we're friends and we're going to do some Bible studies together and it's one of them, their turn to lead it, and I mess around and heard him talking something that ain't kingdom, I'm not going. Amen. How come you ain't coming? Because you ain't acting like you saved. Amen. And so I'm not about to have some unsaved person perpetrating, speaking into my life. Amen. Oh. Now it's an offensive pastor. You said they're not saved. Man, how do you know? You shall know a tree by its fruit. If I am an apple tree and I keep giving you oranges every year, at some point you're going to have to realize this is not an apple tree. Amen? Amen. But these are standards. And so, but see, that's Christianity without the power of the Holy Ghost. Christ, you, know, you, you know, you could, um, they got people at Bible colleges that are professors that don't even have the Holy Ghost. Isn't that a shame? Because all this is is a book of information. You could study this like any other course you take. But until you get power from on high, you won't know what it's really saying. And it won't change you. It'll stay in your head and it'll never penetrate your heart. But the Holy Ghost will cause this word to penetrate your heart. The Holy Ghost will take over you so much that you thought you was about to do something and you did something different because the Holy Ghost said, nope, we're not doing that no more. Amen. That's a takeover. And that's what needs to happen. And we need to understand, no matter what year it is, it's 2024, so what? The same devil that was trying to steal, kill, and destroy in 1980 Amen. is still the same devil in 2024. Now people are just blaming different people, but it's the same devil. Amen. So now... Um, pastor, you know, it's harder with the kids because of cell phones. How many know it's the same devil? Come on, it doesn't matter if it's cell phones or when you didn't have cell phones, you still had the same devil, amen? And so until you realize it's the same devil, you can't blame it on technology. That's why they're all getting addicted to pornography and all that. No, they're, they're not getting addicted because of the cell phone, they're getting addicted because of the devil. Because there's a demonic force pushing them and driving them. And people that were back in the day didn't even have TVs was hooked on stuff. On Same devil. Amen. But guess what? Just like, you know, that's what kids, some, some parents would say, when I'm taking the cell phone. Well, you, you took the cell phone, but you didn't cast out the devil. And so you took the cell phone, so what your, your kid is doing? Using their friend's cell phone. Amen. You, don't, uh, you need to cast out the devil and take the cell phone. Come on now. Amen? Amen? This is how this stuff works, but Christians don't want to face that. Partially because they're not 100. Let me tell you this. If you're not 100, you're not going to kick up dust to no one. That's why you know, a lot of people don't like me, because I'm 100 with it. And 100 is uncomfortable. For other people. They say, oh, who? Huh. You just think you. I don't think I know. Amen. Amen. I'm not doubting anything. Praise God. Because it's the power of God that prevails. Amen. And if you surrender to the power of God, he will change you from the inside out and your life will get better and you will see that the devil won't even want to bother you. But you got to let that power take over. So the same Peter that once said, he says, who do men say I am and who do you say I am? You're, you're, you're the Lord. So he says the right thing, but then in the same chapter, now Jesus is about to tell them about the kingdom plan. And a lot of times the kingdom plan is not in agreement with your fleshly plan. And people get upset with God because they want to do something. And God says, no, I don't want you to do that. 
And they said, oh, no, I think I, I need to get me another pastor because I think, I think you're wrong. No, God is telling you don't do that. Well, now Jesus is about to reveal the plan of salvation. He's saying, I'm going to have to die. I'm going to have to be crucified and raised on the third day. And so from that time uh, uh, forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Then Peter took him, y'all, I don't know if that's on y'all screen. Then Peter took him, took who? Jesus? Some of you guys have been hard-headed in your life. Like me, I was hard-headed. But I never would have thought to rebuke Jesus. Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. What? The will of God shall not manifest because I don't want you to leave. I need you here with me. Now, what does Jesus say to him? Huh? I say every problem has a spiritual origin. So people are arguing with people and never addressing the devil. They're arguing and fussing, getting mad at people waiting for people to apologize to them, but they're never, ever addressing the devil. But he turned and said unto him, unto Peter, get thee behind me. Huh? How did his name become Satan? His name was Peter. But Jesus looked at him and said, get thee behind me, Satan, Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So what did he do? He dealt with the issue. And the issue wasn't Peter. Peter was just a person, man. He can make mistakes just like us. It's the spiritual force that was behind him, that was pushing him. And so... Now, that's Christianity without power. So what does that mean? Peter was gung-ho. He was ready to cut, cut off ears, go to war, do all kind of stuff. But then it was the same Peter that denied Jesus three times. And it's the same Peter that now begins to rebuke Jesus. That is Christianity without power. Y'all in here with me. So if you ever met a person that says they're a Christian, but their actions don't show the fruit of Christianity, then what you're exposed to is Christianity without power. So that is mental assent. That is, you know, that's how pastors want to become pastors, but then, you know, we hear all this stuff of how this pastor fell, this is just not acting like Jesus. Amen? And so that's Christianity without power. Now, here's Christianity with power. What power are we talking about? The power Jesus says, wait, don't go nowhere. Don't do nothing for me until you get this power. So now let's look at Christianity with power from on high, meaning power from heaven. Now go to Acts 3, Acts 3, 6 and 8. 6 and 8 first, yeah. Acts 3, 6 and 8. Six through eight, I should say. All right, so then Peter said, wait, who's this? What's the name? Peter? So did you guys see how Peter was the one that denied Jesus three times? Peter was the same one that rebuked Jesus. Peter was the one to cut the man's ear off. Peter was the one to start cussing and all that. Remember him? This is now still Peter, but something happened before we get to chapter 3. Acts 1.8 happened. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts chapter 2, you need to read that in your own time, but they were all on one accord in the upper room, and the Spirit of God came upon them and set upon them like uh, fire. 
So, let, matter of fact, just put up Acts 2, 2, 1. I got to share that. Because, see, you got to say, well, how did Peter change so much? What happened? So, before we read this, let's go to Acts 2 and then 1. I'm going to just read some of that. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Next verse. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were. They were sitting. Next verse. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled. Y'all, y'all see this? So what happened? So how did Peter go from double-minded, can't get it right, committed, then not committed, to what I'm about to share with you now? Well, this happened. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So he got the fire of the Holy Ghost. He got the baptism. He started speaking in tongues. He was a new man, right? And so what is this? Let me give you another diversion. I'm going to make sure y'all get this. Go to Matthew 3.11. Matthew 3.11, King James. And this is what Jesus is wanting us to make sure we understand, have, uh, you know, just the right amount of clarity on. And so John said, John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Right? And so that's when people are like, okay, man, I want to live for God. I want to do right. And, you know, I'm going to go get baptized. I'm going to do that. That's the water baptism. And that's because you had a change of mind. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with what? Huh? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And that's what happened in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Ghost and fire. Why? It has to be fire because fire is what burns up the shaft. Fire is what burns up the old man. The old man can't keep on coming up if he's burned up. But it's going to take Holy Ghost fire to burn that person up. Amen? Now I'll go back up to Acts chapter 3. So now Peter has been hit with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And he is a changed man. And now we understand why it says, don't go anywhere, wait until you be endued with power from on high. Because now you're going to be able to bring heaven's power, come on, into the earth. I mean, I want to be able to bring heaven's power into your workplace. Amen. You want to bring heaven's power into the store. Yes. You can bring heaven's power wherever you go. Then Peter says, silver and gold, I have none. So they're coming up to the temple. There's a man outside begging. He's begging for alms. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I have none. But such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus. Come on, the Holy Ghost, I have you praying some powerful prayers. Boy, how many of y'all ever been experiencing decreeing something and, and it was Holy Ghost driven and you say, in the name of Jesus. That's a lot different than Lord, 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 please. I, could I have some help? No, in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to pay attention to what Peter did. And Peter said unto him, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk if you are a believer. Did, did he say that? He didn't say that? Let me read that again. Then Peter says, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up again and walk. He said, rise up and walk. And so that's a verbal command. What if the man said, I don't want to? Think about it. I, I don't want to. Like, what do we do today? We've gotten into the time where we just say, um, may I pray for you? But how come Jesus, how come Peter didn't say, may I pray for you? He didn't ask him to pray. He was led by the Spirit. And he grabbed his hand and lifted him up and told him to walk. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up 
and immediately, look at this, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. The man had been crippled his whole life. And he leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Wait, what? Now who did this? But now this is Peter that's gotten connected to heaven's power. Now, without even a question, he yanks the man up. The man receives strength and he's now healed. But he said, in the name of Jesus, he gave a verbal command. This is Christianity with power. Now go to Acts 5, 12 through 16. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And so, let's, uh, let me put that Acts 5, 12 through 16 in the NLT. I meant to give y'all that too. Okay. All right, thanks. And the apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And they, uh, and all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. But no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed, right? And so people weren't trying to take over what they're doing, they were just following. They just became believers, right? And so it wasn't like a bunch of people coming up saying, I'm going to be the pastor. I think I'm anointed to be the pastor. They saw the power of God on display and they were just following it. Amen. And so yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. Crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles work, six sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow. Come on, man. We didn't got all into all of this philosophy and all this intellectual gurus in church and everybody got a new book and now I'm gonna get this book out. I'm put, we got all these mega famous people. But the power which is needed is not even being activated. But when the power is flowing, now heaven's force is invading the earth. And so they put people out in the streets uh, as a result of the apostles work sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them and as he went by okay that if he went by I'll say crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem now look at this crowds imagine this you believe so much that you're trying to get some people See, it wasn't that the people themselves believed so much. It was crowds. Crowds came from villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by what? Evil spirits. And what happened to them? From a shadow? Am I making this up? Is this, is this uh, fictional? So they were healed by a shadow. But today, people don't even want to lay hands on nobody. Come on now. But yet back then, they were healed by a shadow. Amen. And you know what? There was acceptance and expectancy of God's power. That's what was happening in the crowds. They had acceptance. They said, okay, I, I, this power is good. Now today, people reject God's power. Some people don't, they don't like, you know, if you have a prayer time, sometimes people don't want prayer because they might get their mail read. And if, 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 if I start reading your mail, oh man, how you know that? But that's not to harm you or hurt you. It's because God is revealing some things that can help you. Amen. And so back then there was an 
acceptance of God's power. They expected God's power. And because of that, God's power flowed freely. And so once again, today there's a rejection of God's power and the enemy knows he cannot be defeated through intellect. The enemy knows he cannot be defeated through intellect. Let me, let me tell you something. You can study all you want, but until you have power from on high, nothing will change for you. You can memorize scriptures, you can do all kind of stuff, but until you have the power of the Spirit leading you, you cannot prevail. Because the enemy knows he cannot be defeated through intellect and reasoning. It's going to take power from heaven. And so what does he do? He tries his best to keep the church powerless. Now, people now, we're not going to be that church. Amen. I mean, I'll let you know out the gate. Amen. You guys watch me for the first time. You visit here for the first time. You better know right now, this is going to be a Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized Church, we always going to preach the word. We always going to take authority over devils. I'm not apologizing. Amen. Come on. I, well, I didn't know if I wanted to get it. Don't come here. <laughs> because I'm going to make you uncomfortable. If you are trying to find a little sweet, comfortable place, God's going to challenge you here. God's going to push you to a point where you start holding yourself more accountable. That's what he does at this church. He brings people out of comfort zones. He shakes people up because you get too much word. Amen. And then next thing you know, you're going to be powerful. Amen. Next thing you know, you're going to start decreeing stuff yourself. You're going to say stuff and you're going to say, what? Did I say that? <laughs> and the devil's going to try to wait till you answer yourself. And then you're going to say, yeah, I said it and I meant it. And now you're going to be walking in power. And so people don't want to speak in tongues. That's one of the big problems. Think about that. Yeah. How many of y'all ever heard of controversy over that? Anybody? Or is that just me? Yeah. And people don't want to speak in tongues. They don't want to do all this stuff. Why? What, who do you think is behind this stuff? The devil. Amen. I want to keep you away from that. And so people, their expectation has changed. And so people don't want to speak in tongues. They don't want to lay hands on the sick. How many of y'all have heard that? Anybody heard like, like healing is not for today, stuff like that. But, but when did it change? It never, God never took it out the Bible. And, and so they don't want to lay hands on the uh, sick. They don't want to cast out devils. Now look at this. They don't want to confront wickedness. Wow. Huh? Christians don't want to confront wickedness no more. Come on, they don't want to confront homosexuality. They don't want to confront lesbianism. Come on, y'all. You know I'm preaching up in here. Uh, they, they don't want to con uh, confront perversion. You know what I'm saying? This injustice, things that are wrong before God. Christians don't want to say nothing. They're taking their kids to school and letting the teachers teach them anything. And they're just accepting it. But we're in a war. And this war is for keeps. And we must be found standing with Jesus. We must be found standing with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We must be found standing unashamed of the gospel. We cannot just sit back and let everything happen as it's been happening. Hmm? We got to say, oh no, that is not according to the book. I, I will not co-sign with that. I'm not co-signing with abortion. Come on. God is, is, is not pleased. with. I'm not co-signing. I'm not voting for these people just because they're whatever party. No, man. They, they are pro-abortion. I'm pro-life. This has nothing to do with anybody's economy. We're a part of the kingdom of heaven's economy. We get our provision from King Jesus. We don't get our provision because we are bowing to Baal. Too many people are bowing to Baal. We're not going to do it. I'm past it. Well, you know what? If you preach like that, people ain't going to come to their church. Yes, they are. You might leave, but more are coming. Amen. And so you need to get up out of here out the way. 
because we can't be stopped. This anointing is too high. We can't be stopped. This power is too great. We can't be stopped. Man, the, this anointing is flowing so hard, people are getting delivered by just watching a segment of the message. Amen. Amen. Because it's anointed and appointed by God. But such a time as this, God says, do I have any pastors that ain't scared? And I say, here I am, Lord. Amen. Here I am, Lord. Amen. And I'll say it to anybody because the truth don't change. But people backing up off this truth. No, you, we need to get back to what we're supposed to be doing. The church has abandoned the Great Commission. We need to get back to it. We need to get back to the Great Commission. Let's, let's read that out and I'm going to close. Mark 16, 15, 15 to 18. This is just a simple truth, nothing new. It's the Great Commission. That's what every believer is supposed to do. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Some people say, but I'm not a preacher. Are you a Christian? Yes, then you're a preacher. You don't have to be at the pulpit. You are a preacher because you're proclaiming, heralding the truth. You're sharing the good news of the gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that what? Does it say anything about that go to Bible college? Does this say anything that about going to the, man, you know, I need to get connected with a demon busting ministry. <laughs> Anybody that comes out with a de demon busting ministry probably got a demon. Because you don't need no demon busting ministry to cast out a devil. You need to believe. So what does this mean? I could literally be right here and say, yes, I believe you, Jesus, and then go right here. Devil, I command you, get out now in Jesus' name. Amen. I haven't even learned any scriptures yet. And that's how it was happening in the early church. That's how they were growing. How do you think they went from Peter's first sermon in Acts chapter 2, 3,000 people came to the church out of that. And he didn't preach about no prosperity or nothing like that. He preached about repentance. And 3,000 people came to the church. And then by the time they got to Acts chapter 4, 8,000 came. How was it? See, it was multiplying. People were taking the power and giving it away. Taking the power, giving it away. That's what we have in our world today. We're supposed to receive the power and go. Everybody is anointed to do it. That's why I like outreach. Because it puts you in there and makes you swim. So you get to watch me on Sundays and Wednesdays. You can just watch me swimming. But you come on outreach, you're going to get pushed. Amen. But then what's going to happen? The anointing is going to flow through you. And all of a sudden, you're going to feel the power. Y'all just, um, let me just tell you this. I'm going to give you a warning. This thing is stepping up. This power is turning up in a great way. So we're going to start laying hands on people at their doors, and we're going to have to hold them up. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. You didn't, didn't, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't hear what I said. We're going to start praying. Laying hands on people at the door. You know what? I'm just going to pray for you real quick, but I'm going to have to have somebody behind them. Amen. Imagine the Holy Ghost powers hitting people on their doorsteps. Amen. Ding dong. <laughs> Holy Ghost is here. Come on. People come to the door. They start talking to you. And next thing you know, God takes over the whole scene. And somebody gets healed and delivered and starts crying. And oh, come on, how many of y'all ready for addictions to be broken off at the doorstep? Uh, people being healed of uh, drug addiction and all kind of right there on the doorstep. That's what they were doing in the early church. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up surface, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Did you know you had healing power in your hands? Come on, anybody up in here. You have healing power in your hands. You got power to lay hands and connect somebody with heaven's power. And heaven's power will come in and flood a life and bring transformation. This stuff is real, it's for all of us. It's for all of us, but we gotta believe. 
I just heard my pastor tell another testimony that was so powerful. He said he prayed over a lady. He was talking about the flow of heaven, how we're connected to that flow through Jesus. But he prayed over a lady. I think he was in Nebraska on some meeting or some healing service. But he prayed for a lady. He went up to her and said, what's that in your stomach? It's, uh, and then she had, he said, they said, black cancer. And he said, they only give me so much time to live. And he felt heaven's power flow through him, and he just slapped the lady in the stomach. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, what? That's wrong to be slapping people. <laughs> but if the Holy Ghost says do it. Amen. Some of y'all haven't heard of Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth would punch people <laughs> because the Holy Ghost would tell him to. Well, See, it's one thing when you read about stuff in books, but then it's another thing when you know somebody. See, I know my pastor. I know him personally. So these things are not made up. So he slaps the lady's belly, and then he says, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And went on, and went on to finish praying for other people. And she ended up calling the church a couple weeks later and said she got a hold of him. Well, you might not remember me, but... You prayed over me in Nebraska. Well, after you, and remember you hit me? <laughs> and he, he remember that part. <laughs> remember you hit me? But then he said, and she might have traveled to that meeting because she said, I went back to the hotel room and I was in the hotel room and a black bag came out of my body. Mm. See, some of y'all right now, you say, I don't know. Well, how I many know that lady don't care if you don't believe? Amen. Because that black bag came out of her. She was healed of cancer. Went to the doctor two months later, still healed. Years later, she was healed. All because of what? They shall lay hands on the sick. We all got this power, man. I believe the world is waiting on the church to rise up. We waiting on the government. We over here waiting on some... Well, when so-and-so was in, who cares? We got heaven's power. I'm going to take heaven's power. Matter of fact, I'm not waiting to no election. I'm taking heaven's power out there today. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and take heaven's power out there today. And you can start to see change in your neighborhood, in your community, in your life, in your family. You will see change, and you will see that change now. But you got to be one that's willing to take heaven's power and release it. How many of y'all live in the neighborhood? I dare you to release heaven's power in your neighborhood. I dare you to go outside and go on for a walk and just start speaking in tongues down the street. Come on, somebody, y'all up in here. I dare, I dare you to start decreeing and declare there's going to be angelic encounters happening around this neighborhood. People are going to be touched. There's stuff going on. You in that neighborhood for a reason. Yes. Let's release heaven's power. Y'all believe it? Amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your power, for your power is sufficient. We need nothing else but your power. And right now in the name of Jesus, I speak that your power is going to be released freely, that there is going to be miracles, signs, and wonders. We make a commitment to return to the Great Commission. We honor you for who you are and who we are in you. Maybe you're in this place, you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're online. Right now, let me tell you, this is the time. Come into the kingdom and come now. Don't wait. Tomorrow might not show up for you. Give your life to Jesus and do it now. He's welcoming you. He wants you. He wants to be in fellowship with you. You hear the Spirit of God talking to you, raise your hand. I'll pray for you. You're online, raise your hand. God will see you there. We'll pray. I know hands are going up in the name of Jesus. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message would know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me. For all of my sins, I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please. And fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God.